We enter God's perfect plan for our lives. Okay, the Bible tells us that God has a wonderful plan in our lives, that God doesn't just, you know, let things happen by itself. God has a wonderful plan. And uh, in Psalm 139, verses 16 to 17, it says that, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. What it says here is that all the days ordained for me. Now this word translated ordained in the Hebrew, it can mean ordained or fashion or plan. That is like a, a potter, a person who makes pot with clay. That he mold the clay. So all the days planned for us, that mold, God molds for us, were written in your book. They were already written in the book in heaven before one of them, one of the days came to be. So before I was uh, born, when I was in a womb, all the days were already ordained and written in the book. And so, and then in the book, what was written? How precious to me are your thoughts that God has written precious thoughts and vast numbers. How vast is the sum of them? So God has written large number of precious thoughts to us in large number. So God has wonderful plan. Now this plan doesn't come true automatically. It comes true only when we obey God and follow God. I'll, we'll come to that later. But God has the plan already. And many people when they go to heaven, they say, Oh, I didn't know God has a wonderful plan. I didn't follow that plan. And it will, you know, they will have missed great blessings but if they follow God's plan their life will come you know be, uh, become better and better and they will go to a high level a high level of blessings now in Psalm 24 1 it says that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it the world and all who live in it what it says here is that everything in the world the earth and is the Lord's everything in the world is the Lord's and everything in it, everything, all the houses, all the money, all the resources, all the talents, the world and all who live in it, and everyone who live in it belongs to the Lord. The Lord owns all this. So when we follow God, when God is pleased with us, He will give us the necessary resources to bless our life. And I have experienced that greatly in my life. That after I became a Christian, that I saw that God is so real and so good, I already have the heart. Soon after I became a Christian, I have the heart. I want to serve God. I want to serve God with all my heart. And so I, um, I uh, bring the gospel to many of my friends. Uh, I brought the gospel to many people that I know, and they... They were very happy and uh, even though I did not bring many people to Christ, I did help some people to Christ, it was a difficult process. But God was happy with me and I had the heart. I say, Lord, if it's your will, I'm willing to be a pastor because I want to help more people to believe in Jesus. And then God prepared the way for me that I have the ch opportunity to go overseas to study for my uh, bachelor degree in Bible college and also two master degrees in exegesis. Exegesis means explanation of the scripture in uh, the seminary to have two master degrees in exegesis. That God has prepared all this and also in my life, God has planned so many things I can learn, planned uh, so many opportunities I can serve God and open a way for me now overseas in different nations that I can train people to serve God, that I can raise up people to serve God. And also God has provided for me, provided for us that we can bless many people and, and I will have the thoughts to write different books that God has given me the, 
ideas of what to write, and those are very important messages in these last days. So God has the ability to bless us all if we follow Him. He has the ability to bless us all. We don't have to worry about anything. We, everything is in God's hand. And in First Chronicle verse twenty-nine, verse eleven, this is a very special verse. The power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. That is in is God's. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might; in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. So it says here that everything is the Lord's: the power and the glory, the victory and majesty. So victory, He has victory over all enemies, and people want to fight against God. They're in big trouble because victory belongs to God. That is in heaven and in earth. Everything in heaven and in earth belongs to the Lord. And yours is the kingdom of God. The kingdom, all the kingdoms belong to you. And your kingdom of God is the highest. And you are exalted as head over all. You are the head over all the earth. And the riches and honor, all the riches in the world and honor belongs to you. Come from you, and you reign over all. That you are the king over all. In your hand is power and might. That you have power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength. So God can make people great. Can make people become great people and give strength to people. God has this almighty power. If we follow God, if we follow God, our whole life will be blessings. Will be full of blessings. So I hope that we believe that. Yes, Lord. Everything is in your hand. I don't have to worry about anything. And then, God's plan is written in heaven, but it doesn't come to us automatically. We have to follow God. And here in Romans twelve one to two, it tells us three things we need to do. Therefore, I urge, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy. And pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So this first thing is offer our body as a living sacrifice to God, a whole person. Our time, our money, our talents, everything we offer to God. And number two, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Do not follow the pattern of the world. Do not follow the ways of the world. But be transformed, transformed by the renewal. Renewing of your mind, that our mind is renewed by God, that we are changed by God, then we can start to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That we start to realize, to to understand, to find out God's will, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. His will is good and pleasing to God and to us, and perfect is perfect, even though we're not perfect. God has a perfect plan for us. So, who can enter God's plan? People who offer the body as a living sacrifice, the whole person, and do not conform to the world to follow money, or to pursue after success or power. If people pursue that, or competition, they will lose God's plan. And then be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That our mind is transformed by God, changed by God. And then we can find out God's will, and we can start to enter God's will. And then when we obey God more and follow Him and love Him more and serve Him more, then we can enter God's plan more and more. And God will guide us a wonderful plan. It will be a wonderful plan, but it needs the strategy of God. God has the best strategy. We need this strategy. To in order to be able to enter God's perfect will, His will is so perfect that we don't have to worry about anything. When we follow God and obey Him, everything will come true in His plan. Now God has given me this idea. When we follow God totally, we follow God's perfect plan A. And then when we sin or have anger or hurt people, we go down to B or C or D. When we don't love God or disobey God, we keep going down. And then, but if we repent and obey God and love God and 
offer our life to God, then we can go back up. But I wrote down here, sometimes no way back to plan A. Sometimes we might not be able, able to go back to plan A because of age, because we lose certain opportunities, and perhaps we lose the trust of some people. Some people don't trust us anymore because of our sins and our problems, then we cannot enter the perfect plan of God. But we can still go to plan B or C or D. It's still very good. As much as we try, we can go back to God's plan as much as possible. That is the best for us. But many people don't have this mind. Now, first you might say, well, how, where do I get this idea? First, from Romans 12, 1 to 2, it says that only when we offer our bodies a living sacrifice and do not become be, be not, do not be conformed to the pattern of the world and be transformed by the renewal of the mind, then we can enter the perfect plan of God. So only when we obey and be transformed by God and don't follow the world, and then we can enter God's plan. So when people don't obey, then they don't follow God's plan. And then when the more we obey, the more we enter God's plan. Now many people don't have this heart. They just say, I live day by day. I just do whatever is in front of me. But actually, we can ask for a strategy. In order to enter the perfect plan of God, we need training. We need hard work. We need to build on a strong relationship with God. We need to read the Bible and study the Bible in depth. Analyze the Bible and not just follow some teachings, but to follow what the Bible teaches and obey it and love the Lord and when we serve God, we need to be trained also how to serve God and how to enter a higher level, how to enter a higher level of serving God. Now, many people serve God just with, you know, do whatever in, that is in front of them. That is not the best strategy. The best strategy is from God. God has the best strategy. When we ask God for guidance, He will guide us what to do. God has guided me to write certain books and also do trainings overseas, and also now to use the online training. So these are ways that we can spread the teaching of God, and also to face certain wrong teachings in the world, to try to overcome and correct some of these wrong teachings so that the people are not affected by the wrong teachings. And from time to time, I will talk about these wrong teachings that's in the world, that people don't follow the Bible, they don't study the Bible, they don't analyze the Bible, they just spread teachings from other people, not from the Bible. You notice that every point I have here is from the Bible. Even this plan A, B, and C, D is from the Bible. Now, the Bible didn't say the plan A, B, and C, and D, but when we in, uh, analyze Romans 12, 1 to 2, it means that when people offer the body as a living sacrifice and do not be conformed to the world but be transformed by the renewal of the mind then they will start to enter the perfect plan of God and the more they dedicate their life then they will enter a better life but if they don't dedicate their life then they will go down then they will the life will go worse so this is a support from the Bible and also we can see different people in the Bible for instance David he obeys God so he entered wonderful plan of God. But because of his adultery and his murder, he suffered a lot. So that suffering caused him something because he did not obey God. It took away some best plan of God. So every person, when we obey God more and love God more and really follow God's perfect plan, because God has a strategy, we need to ask God for teachings that are from the Bible. And I thank God for, that God has given me wonderful teachings that are very practical and detailed so that people can apply it. Okay, and the Bible tells us too, when we delight ourselves in the Lord, then we can go higher and higher. Isaiah 58 verse 14. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So it says that when you delight yourself in the Lord, when you are happy with the Lord, when you 
Rejoice because of the Lord and count all the blessings of God and be happy because of all the good things of the Lord. Then God will cause us to ride on the heights of the earth that will go higher and higher. And then God will feed us with the heritage of Jacob that God promised to Jacob, to Israel, that the heritage will be given to us and the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now some people said, well, the promises in the Old Testament is only for Israel. My answer to that is, when we read Galatians, it tells us that, and also in Romans, Galatians and Romans, that when we have faith in Jesus Christ, then we become children of Israel, the children of Jacob, that we have uh, of Abraham, of Abraham, then we become the children of Abraham and inherit the blessings of Abraham, the promises of Abraham. So the Bible really doesn't divide the blessings and say these blessings are only for Israelites. In Galatians, it tells us clearly that we can have, we can become the children of, Israel, of uh, Abraham, that we can inherit uh, the, the blessings promised to Abraham. So we, we can hold on to all the promises in Old Testament and all those promises apply to us also. So we can go higher and higher if we follow God's plan and, and love God and delight in God. Now, so just now we talk about the wonderful plan of God. And this plan of God can be destroyed by other people if we let them affect us. And it can also be destroyed by our sins or by laziness when we don't obey God. So this second part is a separate teaching, but I put it together that don't let anyone destroy God's plan for us. Now, no one can destroy God's plan for us if we don't let them destroy the plan. If we follow God and don't be angry because of them, then nobody can destroy God's plan. But if we let other people affect us, then we can lose the perfect plan of God. So in order for us to understand uh, the wonderful blessings of God, we go back to this verse we talked about earlier that God has written already for us a wonderful plan in our life. So every one of us is very, very special. We are all very special. We have a wonderful plan written for us. And then here we read, Jesus did not commit himself to the people. That means Jesus did not entrust his life to them. He did not think that people can bring more blessings to him. He did not rely on people. Now, Jesus blessed people and Jesus entrusted the gospel to the disciples and then to all Christians. But it doesn't mean that Jesus' ministry is controlled by people. He did not commit himself to them, John 2, 24. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of men for he knew what was in men. So he knew what people are. People are sinners. So he doesn't commit himself to them. He doesn't let them control their lives, uh, his life. He's he let God the Father control his life and guide his life. So he knows people cannot really bless us. The blessings all came from God. That our blessings don't come from people. But God can use people to bless us. But ultimately, ultimately, the blessings came from God. And Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So the heart is deceitful above all things that our heart like to cheat, like to take advantage of people and desperately wicked. Our heart is wicked. So what we need to do is to repent and turn away from the sinful way. Turn away from anger and frustration and negative thinking and negative feelings. All this will take away the blessings of God. So we know that people have God, so we don't entrust our lives to God. And then when God helps us, we don't have to fear people. People cannot destroy God's plan. 
in Psalm 118 verse 6, The Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? So the Lord is with me and I will not be afraid of anyone. What can people do to me? Mere mortals, mortals mean people who die. What can people who die do to me? They cannot hurt me. I don't have to be bothered by them. I don't have to worry about them. I don't have to be affected by them. And Romans 8.31, If God is for us, who can be against us? So nobody can be against us when God is for us. So we can trust in God and say, My life will go higher and higher if I trust in God. So here is a picture that this man stand there and then someone very big steps on him. But if God is for me, I'm very powerful. Even if this man is big and rich and have all the power, I have the power of God. Who can be against us? So nobody can be against us. And then we look at Joseph in the Old Testament. Even when his brothers try to harm him and sell him. But God has a wonderful plan. In Genesis 39 2, the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. You know, when Joseph was sold to Egypt, he could not understand the Egyptian language, but he trusts in God. He has a good relationship with God. And then the Lord was with him. That means that the relationship with God holds on even when he was suffering. That he would keep praying to God, keep trusting in God, that God's presence stayed with him, and then he prospered because the Lord was with him. And then when he saw his brothers again, Genesis 50 verse 20, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So his brothers said to him, you know, uh, they lied to him and said that uh, your father before he died told you uh, to treat us nicely. And then Joseph said, you don't have to say that. You know, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. It's all for the good of everyone to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many souls, to save many people. So even when you did harm to me, but it could not harm me because I have God. So we know that our lives cannot be affected by people, but many people are affected by other people. And Psalm 149 verse 3 says, Don't trust, don't put trust in people. Uh, that Psalm 130, 146 verse 3, Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save, because they will all die. They will all die. And everything happens to them is under is in the hand of God. And God can take away their lives anytime. God can take away the money, the wealth, the health, everything. So we don't have to trust in people. Many people trust in the husband or wife or the parents for everything. Actually, it's God to provide for us. Now, we do want to keep a good relationship with our husband and wife or parents or children. We want to keep the relationship, but we don't rely on them for provision, for blessings. If they provide for us, it's great, but we don't rely on them. We rely on God alone. And then in Psalm 37, verse 7, it talks about, do not be anxious, do not fret. Fret means be anxious because of wicked people. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. So it says that, be still before the Lord, relax, stay calm, and wait patiently for the Lord. And do not be anxious, do not be angry and frustrated when people succeed in their ways. When they carry out their wicked schemes, when some people do wicked things, don't worry about them. Refrain from anger, stay away from anger and turn from wrath. Wrath means great anger. Do not fret, do not worry, do not be anxious. It only leads to evil. So when we are frustrated, it only leads to evil. So we want to say, I don't have to be affected by people because God has a wonderful plan in my life. I want to follow God's wonderful plan and no one can take away those, all those blessings. 
Only I can take away the blessings if I don't follow God. If I follow God, no one can take away the blessings. Now, very often people are hurt by people, and so they lose hope, they lose direction, they think they're useless. But what people say, they just stay in the air for one second. We don't have to take the negative words seriously. Now, many people accuse us, attack us, uh, say negative things about us, or yell at us. It's their problem. It's their problem. They have to face God. They have to face God. They have to face the judgment of God. And I don't have to take the words, the negative words seriously. And God will bless me when I obey Him. God will give me back what they take away. What they take away, God will give me back to me. So when I seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all this thing will be added to me. And then we need to clear the negative words from our mind and fill ourselves with God's word. Now here is a picture of someone, you know, that um, uh, it could be a husband yelling at a wife. Now very often the wife would be very unhappy, frustrated, and uh, hurt, and depressed. But what he said, stay in the air only for one second. If she doesn't take it seriously and, and say that, well, he's always like that. He always yells at me, it's his problem. I don't have to take it seriously. Then he can clear her heart of all the negative words of the husband. When the husband yelled at her and said, you are useless, it's not true. It's, she's not useless. So she cleared the garbage out and say, I'm useful in the sight of God and fill ourselves with God's word. That means God says, I'm useful. God has a wonderful plan in my life. God will provide for me. Then we dump the garbage from our lives. We dump all the negative words from other people and from ourselves. Sometimes we say, oh, I'm no use, I'm no good because I have done something wrong. We can dump all those and don't have to think about those things. We can think about God's grace all the time. And then we don't have to take those words seriously. So we need to clear all the garbage from people on ourselves. So how people hurt us and criticize us. Sometimes people hurt us and criticize us and say negative things about us. And how we dislike or, and despise ourselves, even ourselves. We dislike ourselves and despise ourselves. This is garbage. And how we criticize ourselves and, and have no hope that we, in our heart we have no hope. We criticize ourselves and say, I'm no good. Then all these are garbage negative words and thoughts from people and from ourselves. So we need all these negative thoughts and anger, depression has to dump the garbage, clear all garbage from our hearts. And then fill ourselves with God's word and love. So let God's word and love fill our heart so that we are full of the grace of God, full of the joy of the Lord. God is blessing me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to be affected by people. I'm happy and joyful. Hallelujah. I have everything from God. And God has given me these five steps to victory to help us overcome different problems. And I put a keyword in, in red. Be aware of how we are affected by people. So someone affects us, we are aware. Oh, he causes me to be angry. His frustration causes me to be unhappy, to be depressed. And then believe that when we are affected by people, it's destructive. That it would destroy us if we, if we are affected by people. So we don't want to be affected by people. And then apply biblical principles to the problems. What does the Bible tell me to do? So what does the Bible tell me to do? You know, the Bible says, do not fret because of the wicked people. Do not be affected by them. Do not be angry with them. And bless them. Bless those who curse us. If they curse us, we bless them. And we are filled with the Word of God, with the promises of God. And then pray to have forgiveness and strength. That pray to God that He will give us forgiveness and strength. That He forgive our sins that we are affected by people and give us strength. And choose to obey. I choose not to be affected by people. I choose to stay in the love of God. I choose to enjoy God. God is happy with me. God blesses me. When I trust in Him, He's very happy. When people try to hurt me and I'm not affected, God is very happy that I trust in Him. And then we can overcome sins by stopping the sinful thoughts before they come action. So here's five steps to victory. is 
So when we have these negative thoughts, we want, might want to revenge, we might want to be angry with the person or yell at the person, but we stop the sinful thoughts before they become action. So in our heart, we might have revenge or anger or frustration or depression. These thoughts, we want to stop it because God has a wonderful plan. So we need to use the Bible to change our thinking that now here we look at these five steps to victory. So apply biblical principles. The biblical principle is that people cannot take away God's blessings. Even when they hurt me, it's their problem. They hurt me, it's their problem. They yell at me, it's their problem. And God wants to bless me. So I trust in God. So this, I will stop the sinful thought of anger and frustration. I will put in the thoughts of appreciation of God relaxing in God, trusting in God, rejoicing in God to replace the thought of anger and depression. So this is the way to victory, to replace negative thoughts with positive thoughts from God. And then we keep praying to God and then we will have more and more joy. And then the effect of these people on us will go away. Then we won't be affected by people. These five steps to victory is helpful to handle different problems in our life. Now, even when we go through difficult times, God is with us. Sometimes there are people around us attacking us all the time. Doesn't matter because God is more powerful than people. In Psalm 23 verse 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the uh, difficult times that is like, almost like death is going to come, difficult times is going to come, but I will fear no evil because God is with me and your rod and your staff is with me. And uh, the rod is for guiding the sheep. The rod guides us and the staff is for hitting the sheep for discipline. So his guidance and his discipline will comfort me and assure me that God is, this picture here, God is guiding this person in a storm. He's guiding this person in a storm. So when we have difficult times, we don't let that affect our lives and don't let the situation or people take away the wonderful plan of God. And also when we're not affected by people, we want to overcome that with love. We want to overcome the negative thinking toward people with love. Then we have victory. We, we're not just not angry with them. We want to overcome them with love. Overcome their wickedness with love. Romans 13, 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. So when we love each other, we have fulfilled the law. That we uh, are following God. And then we are following, fulfilling the Lord. And the Lord is happy with us. Now, some people say it's very hard to overcome uh, the uh, of how people affect us. They say it's very difficult. And then here I say, if we improve by 1% a day, we can improve much in 100 days. It could be 100%. So we can keep encouraging ourselves and say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If someone affects me, it doesn't matter. If I work on it every day, I improve a little bit, I get more joy then I'm having victory. If I trust in God more, I am, I'm having victory. If I can be nice to the person, I'm having victory. In Philippians 4, 8, it says, fin Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So what it says that if there is anything good from other people or from us, when we do things that is noble, when we do things that is lovely, that we love people, meditate on this thing and say, how can I, why did I change? It's because God changed me. God changed me. God changed my life. And then I respond to God and follow God. And then I change my life. Thank God for that. Thank God for working my life. And thank God that you give me a spirit of obedience that I can change. So we can think about this thing and appreciate ourselves. 
we need to learn to appreciate people and ourselves. Even when people hurt us, sometimes they have good things, and then we can appreciate the good things of other people. So we can appreciate what they have done for us, any good thing. So we can here, I write, encourage ourselves for any improvement. So sometimes we cannot overcome the, how people affect us immediately. Then we work on it and we improve a little bit. Then we say, wow, I have improved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm improving. Okay. So now we have finished talking about the wonderful plan of God and that we don't automatically enter God's plan. God has plan, plan A for us. But if we sin and disobey and have frustration and anger and laziness, we go down to B, C, D, E, F, G. But if we obey God and repent and trust in God again, we can go back up. But sometimes we might not be able to go back to plan A. The earlier we turn back, the higher we can go. If we wait until we are 60 years old, it's already quite late. But if we turn back to God as soon as possible, we still have time. So uh, God has this wonderful plan and one area that affects us is uh, people. The people affect us. And the next thing we'll talk about is sin. But we'll pause here for now. We'll have a prayer to help us to thank God for His wonderful plan. That His wonderful plan for us is wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we pray now. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We worship you. We adore you. We love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, because you have a wonderful plan in our life. You plan great things in our life. You want to do great things in our life. And our life will go higher and higher and higher if we follow your plan. So we want to offer our body as a living sacrifice to you. And we want to uh, turn away from the world and not to be conform to the pattern of the world but be transformed by the renewal of our mind by the Holy Spirit that our mind is renewed so that we can enter your plan and we want to serve you more to glorify you more and also we want to ask God for a strategy that we want to enter a higher plan a plan that we can bless more people and ways that we can use our gifts more and God will guide us and thank you you give us wisdom how to use our life and sometimes we are affected by people because people sometimes say negative things because all people are sinful including ourselves we are sinful so we have sins and we uh, when we are affected by people then we will have frustration and anger and it will destroy God's plan so we want to not to be affected by people we don't want to be uh, to have anger or sadness because of them. We want to rejoice in the Lord. Even if our husband or wife or our children or parents cause us to be unhappy, we say uh, it is their problem. If I have anything wrong, I ask them to forgive me. If I haven't done anything wrong, I still continue to bless them, pray for them, and be nice to them and not to have anger toward them. Lord, help us to trust in you and rely on you only so that we'll follow your wonderful plan, so that no one can steal the wonderful plan from us. Lord, we want to dedicate our life to you. We want to dedicate our whole life to you. We only live once. We only live once. And this time when we live, we can glorify you and to go higher and higher and higher. But if we let you affect us, we'll go down more and more. Lord Jesus, forgive us and wash us clean of the blood of Jesus and help us to appreciate your wonderful plan and to live out the wonderful plan of yours. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and give you strength. Now I want to answer one question asked by a brother in Kenya. The question is, um, how about the Old Testament uh, law? Uh, because the last session we talked about the law and the grace of God. Now the Old Testament law, the moral law we follow in the New Testament, but the Old Testament uh, ceremonial laws we don't follow. 
For instance, the law of eating. We don't have to follow the law of eating of the Old Testament. And uh, the festivals. Uh, in Galatians, Paul said that, uh, I worry for you because you, um, you follow the festivals and the dates so closely, I worry for you. Because those people think they have to follow the law, the Old Testament ceremonial laws, the festivals, and the Sabbath day in order to get more blessings. Because in the New Testament, in Colossians, it says that all these are the shadow of Christ. And the real thing is Christ. And all those things, the Sabbath day and the festivals are only the shadow of Christ. Now, it's not wrong to keep the Sabbath day if someone wants to do it. It's fine. But we don't have to do it. We don't have to follow it. And it doesn't bring extra blessings. We have all the blessings in Jesus Christ. So, um, now the Old Testament law, uh, so there's the ceremonial law and the, and the moral law. And then in the Old Testament, some people think that in the Old Testament, they are forgiven by the law. That's not true that David said is blessed is those are those people who are forgiven and cleansed of their sins and Psalm 103 it talks about that he forgives all my sins even you know in a in the New Testament in the book of Hebrews it says that the cows and the lambs really don't forgive our sins it's Jesus Christ and it says that Jesus Christ's redemption forgives the sins of the people in the previous covenant, it says in the book of Hebrews. It forgives the people in the previous covenant and in this new covenant. So the Old Testament and the New Testament people are all forgiven because of the grace of God and because of the uh, death of Jesus Christ on the cross. It's not by the law. The law can never forgive. And Paul did say, if there has been a law that can forgive, then we don't need Jesus Christ. But there is no law that can forgive. It's only Jesus Christ who can forgive. Going through the questions, why I want to explain again why I go through these questions. Because uh, these are concepts many people may not have. And uh, it's very important that we learn this and be able to apply it in our teaching.